We're going to still talk about the theme that uh, Pastor them have set, which is worship. Only we're going to talk about it from another perspective, and we're going to talk about praise, which is just another part of worship. Webster's uh, English Dictionary says this, to say a good thing about someone, give a good opinion, to praise someone's works, to worship, especially out loud in song, to praise to God. Then there's uh, Bible concordances and different things that also say, honor and render for worth, approval, a joyful tribute to homage and render to God. The Bible makes it clear that Christians are to render to God the proper praise and honor with good gladness and thanksgiving and for the manifold fold mercy and goodness to mankind. I am going to ask my wife to read a few scriptures that kind of share some of those thoughts and then I'm going to share some of what I think about that. These scriptures are from Psalms 30, 12, Psalm 35, 28, Psalm 147, 1, 1 Peter 2, 9, and Psalm 150. I'm going to read them in order. That's why I said where they're from. That my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness, your praises all day long. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fitting to praise him. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's literally hundreds of scriptures that share the importance and the function of praise in the Bible. And it is really wonderful to do what we just got through doing, worshiping and in fellowship with other people. And, and that's really good and we should continue to do that. But I also think that God has also position a part of worship and a part of praise for your individual in your own personal ability to use praise and even worship as a weapon to help you in the battle in this world that we live where there is a kingdom of darkness constantly bombarding us and trying to trip us up and trying to stop us from being all that God has and trying to stop the plan of God any way it can possibly do. And the Bible says that if we make a stand that the enemy will flee from us. And that stand, I believe, really has to do in how you perceive your God and how you perceive his authority in your life. And if you look at it from that perspective and stand on that perspective, then the enemy will flee because he already knows what you are now beginning to understand. He already knows that and he knows that he can't battle that so he runs, goes. He doesn't want to deal with you understanding who you are and understanding who your God is. So he doesn't want you to do that. And when you do that, uh, he'll come back later. <clears throat> now, in the Peter 1, 2, 9, it talks about that a chosen people and to see us as priesthood and a holy nation. 
that's just not Israel. That's all believers that God wants us to see it that way. And here's where I want to kind of camp in talking about praise and how we can use it. I kind of grew up in a kind of hostile environment, and so uh, maybe what I'm going to share for a moment may be foreign to people who haven't been in that situation. Uh, it's kind of modern now because you hear a lot about bullies and different things, so it's just not uh, something that would win my day. It's more prevalent probably now, bullying at jobs and all kinds of stuff where somebody's trying to force their will or something on you because they think that you need to submit to them. And there were times when I was in those situations that even though I was willing to fight and do my part in not allowing this bully to have his way, it was cool to know I had four or five brothers and that my brothers would help me or even if I didn't get the best of this, I could account on them, especially when I know it was something that was being unfair and someone just trying to take advantage of me, I knew my brothers would come and help me out or deal with it later. And sometimes you would even say, okay, wait till my brother gets you. You, you think, you think. Well, that's the kind of thing I believe God wants us to see and do when we're in certain challenges of our life to when we're dealing with the works of the enemy, however that might be, that he's coming at you in discouragement, frustration, shooting the darts, whatever it might be, we have sometimes a tendency to know that in our own ability, there's no way we're gonna win this position or there's no way can I not respond in the negative way that I'm going to respond because I don't know any yet better. So I'm going to look at it from a negative point of view rather than a positive point of view. But God wants us to be able to look at it knowing now that we are children of God to never not look at it from a positive point of view. He wants us always to look at it from a positive point of view because of not you but who you now serve and who you now are in his family. So he wants you to recognize he's not going to allow any unjustness to come your way without him going to deal with it and standing in your behalf, period, because you're his. And like a big brother, they're not just going to let it be done when he get a chance to see this person, he got something to say to this person you know, one way or another, because that's family, you know, not, you know, just because you did, y'all, you got to deal with me now. Well, that's what God is wanting us to understand. So now, when I'm in a situation that might be tough at work, and, or on the job, but that's at work, or on, on, on daily lifestyles, and I'm dealing with a negative situation that I believe is negative, Sometimes I have a tendency to concentrate on the negative and already begin to speak doubt and frustration into myself, accepting, well, this, here we go again. I'm, you know, every time I try to do something good, here comes something bad, and this person, they just, they always trip me up. Well, I don't think it's wrong to accept that situation, but what I believe we need to do as believers is begin to look beyond that and begin to see that here, God is good and God can help me in this situation and begin to speak the praises of God and the praises that will help me see all that God is helping me be that will give me a better way to deal with this situation. And I begin to praise God, knowing that God will help me and not looking at the ability of what this situation could make me or cause me to do things I don't want to do. And I start seeing the things that God has put into my heart and the abilities that he's given me now to be a good person, to walk and to have authority, that I begin to worship him and praise him in the way I see it. All of a sudden, I realize something that I'm beginning to worship, and God likes worship 
And now God is also not only coming to protect me and help me, he's also wanting to inhabit the praise I'm now beginning to speak in this situation of how God is great. I will give you an Old Testament uh, example of that. And I've used this before. But David. David is in a situation where uh, things have been stolen from them. Uh, this is men and them. And it doesn't look good. The, uh, the people are saying, man, this is terrible, David. Why are we in this situation? Why are we even listening to you? And everybody begins to get really down on David. But the Bible says that he encouraged himself in the Lord. He began to look at how good God has been, even in this situation, and how God has spared his life, even up to that time, a couple of times. And he starts rehearsing what God has done and what God is able. And all of a sudden, the Bible says he begins to get stirred up and he begins to get encouraged. And, he begins, and all of a sudden, in that time, God sends the answer and a person comes and tells him, you know, where the enemy's at and they go. Now, he could have begun to just really begin to inhabit all this negative stuff and begins to doubt himself. And he would not probably been able to see the answer because he's all caught up in all the defeat already rather than embracing God and allowing himself to praise God and by praising God you, your spirit especially now that we all as believers in the Old Testament wasn't necessary that way but in the new covenant by believing in God, God will give you his Holy Spirit, and it's for every individual, not just for certain people. Was it, it was at that time, there were certain individuals that walked in that realm. Now, every believer has a promise from God, if he truly embraced God, that God would give himself to you, him, in the person of the Holy Spirit. So now you have the Holy Spirit in you that is now beginning to help you, and it's also stirring you up to help you praise this God and help you now to see the situation from a perspective of all that God is. So whatever answer you don't have, God has the answer for you. And if you start speaking that and start reaching out for that, then you automatically take yourself away from engaging the negative. And you now have embraced the hope of what could be, and then God shows up because he inhabits your praises. He inhabits all that you are beginning to acknowledge who he is, and you're beginning to acknowledge and trust who he is, and all of a sudden your spirit is built up. Now, <clears throat> because we're in the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God has a enemy, and he has an army, the kingdom of darkness. So he's constantly, even with Jesus, trying to attack and whittle that down any way he can. He's constantly doing that. And the Bible says he's out to kill and destroy. So there's never not a time that his kingdom isn't trying to weaken you when they can. And sometimes it has nothing to do about your sinful nature because you're not really doing anything that's sinful. You're not really walking in that way. It's just the battles of life that you're facing and the difficulties that come with that that puts you into this position. Now, God is a God of love and peace. But God is also wanting you to know there are times when you can be a, a person that loves and a person that is peace, but there's a time when you have to take a militant approach to something. A militant approach means I have to be the one that is willing to do what I need to do aggressively to change this situation. It doesn't mean that I'm going to hit somebody. It doesn't mean that I'm going to start cursing someone. But it does mean that I'm going to take the aggressive act to change this situation. So, and it says that the kingdom does come by, come by a force because you're fighting something that's resisting you or trying to put up a resistance, either way you want to say that. So you have to aggressively say, I'm not accepting this. And I'm not necessarily gonna wait 
for you to hit me or for, you, for these situations to start manifesting themselves. I'm going to go on the aggressive and start walking in what I know I can walk in now because the word tells me I can do that. The word says that as a believer, this is how I'm supposed to see myself. And it's kind of like when I'm in a battle that demands patience, I don't think necessarily that means I ought to wait here and wait till things change. I think it means that now that I'm in this battle and I need patience, I have to aggressively step in to manufacturing how to do this without being hyper, how to do this without being anxious. But I need to do some things that I need to do to change this situation. And as I do that, it may not happen right away. So that's where my patience has to, you know, I'm doing the right things, but it may not happen right this moment. But it's not like I need to wait around to things to cool off, then proceed. No, I need to go ahead and perceive, knowing that the results of what I'm praying for or what I want to happen may not happen right at this moment, but I need to proceed, excuse me, I need to proceed in the actions that will help me get there. That's what I mean by being militant, being aggressive, being, oh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do what I need to do, start praising, start thinking, start seeing this situation, even though the natural results are not here yet, but part of faith and hope is seeing it as though they are and beginning to act as though they are. That sometimes you have to do aggressively, especially when it's a situation that got you pinned up against the wall. You know, where you really got to do something. You know, you can't just not do something. But it's not in who you are anymore, but who you serve and who you represent. And just like in the case of Abraham, when he was in a situation where his wife was in a situation where she could be in trouble and he didn't know quite how to handle it and he kind of started off with saying something wasn't fully true, God showed up anyway <laughs> and resolved the situation both times. And we see that happen when his son wind up in the same situation. And that's what we need to see and begin to speak through praise and through worship of our daily lives. So it's not just something we do when we're at church and we need to do all that. <laughs> but it's something that you continually do in your situation. Even when there's times when you're doing a job that you know that you have the knowledge of how to do this, but the knowledge isn't quite caught up with your experience of how to really do it. So you're kind of a little uncomfortable because you know kind of what you should do, but you haven't done it enough to feel really comfort in, in doing it. And now you're in a situation where you need to perform. You know, there's a situation that you need to solve it. And again, like you know you know how, but you haven't had that much practice in it. Well, if you start thinking that there's no way that I can do this and I'm going to fail, it's going to be harder for you to walk in what you need. But if you start realizing and speaking that you can do this and because God has given you the ability and that you can do this, and even though it might not start off as smooth as you want it to be, but the end results, it'll be okay. Because you're already beginning to praise what God can do. You're also looking at yourself from a sense of praise to know that, hey, God is changing me. God has equipped me. So I don't have to see this in defeat already. I'm already beginning to look at it from a brand new perspective because that's part of what God wants us to do. Look at it from his perspective and from his perspective, even before you were born on this earth, he already looked at your life, looked at what he wanted you to be. He's seen all of those things and he already has given things for you to do and for you to succeed in them. So he's already seeing things that you can't see, and he's already equipped you to do things that you don't even know you can do yet. And now that you're coming into the real life situation, sometimes for you to really see that all of God is, that he is my healer. I believe that right now that God's my healer. 
But I've been a little bit more serious about that now that I have issues I need God to heal me in. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you, you kind of embrace that a little bit more because you're in the experience of that now. And you're beginning to really know that God can do that. And as even in though this new challenge you had never faced before, but from the ones that you have faced before, give you more hope and you know that God can from those things. So it helps you to go into something that you haven't got a chance to really do before or experience before. But based on what you've already been through the relationships that you know God met you in, helps you to step to another level that you don't really have the experience yet to walk. I believe all that's connected to our worship and our praise that we now inhabit as believers. And as we activate that in every part of our life, how much more are we going to be the light and be what God has called us to be? I think I've heard even from myself at times that part of our desire is to always want to be in God's will and to do things that we know God wants us to do. And that's, we should be thinking that way. But as we begin to worship and praise God, how much more does that help us to get there? How much more does that help us to see and to know that God is with us and that he is helping us to see that clearly? Because we're constantly seeing that God is involved in all of that. From choosing a gift for someone to praying for someone who has a very serious deaf disease. For God, there's no difference. He still has the answer. He still wants you to see that he wants to work with you and to help you Walk in the answer because he's with you and he has that answer. So to him, they're both on the same level. He's in charge. He's in control. Now to us, it will be different and rightfully so because we see things different and we are different. But to God, all he knows, he wins. Nothing jumps up that he didn't see. He's not surprised by anything. And he's willing to help you overcome because he's already overcame for you. All the more reason he wants you to know that you can do this because of who he is. I think right now around the world, this is 16, 2016. There's some few things I think it's obvious as believers to see. There is a level of fear around the world coming from different uh, perspectives, different things it's causing this, that really is hard to ignore that we live in a very vulnerable, dangerous world, greater than any time its history has put it, than any time. And yet we're in it, we're alive in it. And it's easy to allow fear to start trapping you and you're focusing on the things that are causing the fear rather than concentrating on you're still a child of God. And this situation that you're now alive in, God knew would be. As a matter of fact, he put you there so you would be part of the answer when that happened because you are alive at the time he wanted you to be alive, if you really believe God's in control. Now, if you don't really believe that, you believe it's a roll of dice, well, then I guess I'm not gonna convince you of that. But if you believe that God is in control, then we're already on the same page. I don't know how that works, I just believe that. I mean, I got all that figured out and all of that, but I just believe that, that I'm here now because this is the time that God wanted me on this earth, all right? And I'm not saying that sometimes we can get robbed and our lives can get cut short, 
God knew that too. So I'm not saying that means that, you know, you're going to live a certain time always. All I know you're going to live as long as God has destined you to live. Even though he knows that that may be cut short because he sees this, but God is still in control and he knows what's going to happen. I believe that. The Bible, to me, teaches that. So now I am in the understanding that with all these things out here that's going on and all the new forces of spiritual, the Bible talks about spiritual principalities and powers that are demonic, that are going to affect our world. Well, we can see the evidence of that now more clear than we ever could. I mean, you can just see that it's just it's totally demonic, doesn't make any sense, and there's no way that you can rationalize this. There's no way that you're going to find a sensible reason for this happening, other than it's just pure sin, pure ugly, and pure demonic. There's no other excuse for it than that. But instead of embracing the fear factor that maybe should come with that, I'm embracing the praise factor of my God will still be in control. And my God is still equip me for a certain part and producing his righteousness and his kingdom in the middle of all this mess. Because I am part of his people. I am part of the answer because he's in me. And he wants me to be able to be open enough that the world can look at me and at least know God exists by the things that he's doing in my life, even in the middle of all this mess. And as I continue to worship and praise him and seize the opportunity even though the Seahawks may not win today, hopefully they do like brother prayed, I know that still when one of those players that are a Christian gets asked something, they're going to take the advantage and share something about the goodness of God because you see them doing that a lot. The first thing they're going to come out of their mouth is God is good and God help me and God did. They're seizing the opportunity to praise God to a world... <laughs> that especially on a Sunday is not interested in God. They're interested in worshiping this sport and, and sometimes I get close to doing that myself. But still, out of that, you got believers lifting up God and saying it's not in my ability that I got these skills. God gave them to me. He's given me this opportunity. So if you ask me how did you do that, how can I not say not but because of God? That's how I do this. And even though you may not want to hear that, if you don't want to accept God and all of a sudden, you know, you were trying to escape from the realities of life and here this person is talking about God, why are they doing that? Because for him, that is the reality of life, <laughs> his God. And it's the praise. And it's like, I think that's so cool. And you're seeing more sports people, not just football players, more sports people doing that more and more. Giving God praise and being able to take this avenue and say something about God. Because it's real to them. They're not trying to, you know, get a plot in. It's really, you know, being honest to why this is this and why I got this outlook. And no, I know this was terrible. How did you get through it? Well, because of God. Isn't that cool? And isn't that kind of what this is talking about? Not just in this church where we should obviously do this, but outside too when you're in the world because praise and worship is a part of what you do. And it's a part of a weapon that you now realize that is in your hands to use to help you, to encourage you, and to change the situation that the enemy is trying to bring your way. And you're speaking praise and you're speaking all that God is and your focus is on that to help you become and do what God wants you to do. And I'll just leave it with that, and God bless you in Jesus' name.